You've heard something. Deborah's talked to you, hasn't she? I spoke with Deborah. She told me about your little talk. You mean she lied to you about our little talk? You held out on me, Raven. You were at the unicorn the night Dawn was murdered, weren't you? That doesn't mean I stuck a knife in his back, for heaven's sake. That's what she wants you to believe. Don't you understand that? She wants me to go to jail. You withheld vital evidence. Now, how are you going to deny that? Derek, if I thought it was vital, I would have told you. Don't you understand? I mean, I, I, I want you to find Elliot's murder. As a matter of fact, I thought you already did. Deborah said you saw somebody there. I saw a shadow. I saw a shadow that scared the living daylights out of me, so I left. Makes you a material witness. Don't you realize that? Now, she said you resisted her when she tried to keep questioning. Oh, great, great. That means I'm going to be arrested for resisting an officer now. I don't understand what that woman has against me. Does she love you or what? She's probably mad about Wait, you and no... Stop she... bringing up personal motives, please. You cannot deny the fact that you withheld information. I didn't think it mattered. I'm telling you, I couldn't see anything. I couldn't tell whether it was a man, a woman, a beast, or a puppet, for that matter, and it was probably him. Who? Kelly McGrath. He was probably sneaking around there getting ready to attack Elliot, if he hadn't already. Now, Derek, come on. Are you going to make a big deal out of this? I can't suppress this information. <sighs> Look, I don't want you to call it evidence because it isn't. And I would also like to know who this mysterious witness is. Well, we don't have any witness. What about the witness that, uh, that, that Deborah said saw me in the unicorn? There's no witness. Where did you get that idea? Well, she told me that you... What? She was lying to me. She was bluffing. Why, that... dirty little... I could kill her! Raven, now don't talk like that. Shut up. Listen to me. I'll be able to leave here in a few minutes. I'll come right to your house and we'll talk. She's not the boss, remember? I am. Well, good, then you can stop her. Tell her I didn't do anything wrong. That seems to be a debatable point. Wait a minute. Has she brainwashed you or what? You were aware of vital evidence pertaining to the Dorn murder case. You kept it to yourself. Well, I didn't think it was important. Willfully withholding evidence looks just as incriminating as Kelly McGrath's disappearance. I didn't want you to know I was there because I didn't want you to know I had a date with Elliot. Are you afraid of my notorious jealousy? I was afraid you would misunderstand and think that I was still interested in him. Oh, so you went to see him out of disinterest? No, I went to see him because of the letter, that stupid letter. He was going to show it to my husband and ruin my chances of winning the custody battle. How did he get that letter in the first place? I don't know. He stole it. That was supposed to have been lost. <sighs> well, he found it. And then he used it to play a stupid game with me. What's he doing? Blackmailing you for what? Money? Money? I don't have any money. The only money I have is my allowance from my father's estate, and with inflation, that's practically worthless. What could he possibly hope to get? Oh, I can figure that out. Oh, why did that letter ever turn up? If it hadn't, I'd be rich now, and nothing would matter. It was very important for you to keep him from producing that letter, wasn't it? Derek, I did not go there to kill Elliot Dorn. Whatever reason I went there for, I didn't get any further than the entranceway. Why no further? Because there was someone lurking around in there. All right. What does someone look like? I don't know. It was a shadow, but it was moving. It's not very much to go on. Well, I'm sorry, but I was so frightened I wasn't about to stand around in there and find out who it was. I just ran out of there. I just thought of something. If I saw that figure... Then that figure must have seen me.
help you keep yourself in control. I don't want you numb. There is a killer out there, and my name could be next on his hit parade. Kelly McGrath is under arrest. Now, come on, put these thoughts out of him. Kelly McGrath could be up for bail and probably outside my front door. Well, we'll keep him under surveillance. I want police protection. I'm not going to put a guard out in front of your door. All right, then, why don't you put me under uh, protective custody, then? What? Well, he wouldn't dare do anything if I was sleeping next to the chief of police, would he? <sighs> I think you've gotten a little carried away with yourself. For someone who's supposed to care about me, you don't seem very worried about something awful happening to me. I'd be worried if I thought there was something to worry about. Well, if you loved me, you'd protect me. My feelings have got nothing to do with this. Well, do you love me or not? How did we get onto this topic? I want to know. Come on. I want to go. Bye. It sounds to me like I'm getting the brush off. You know that's not it. No, come on. Come on, I can take it. Uh, am I just a pleasant diversion? That's not true, and you know. Oh, it. perhaps a preferable alternative to a cold shower. Now, will you stop talking like that? I hate it when you denigrate yourself. Well, if it's true, Derek. No, it's not true. Well, then, what are your feelings? Now, I never led you on. You know that. I just want to know if your intentions are honorable. <sighs> I'm not very good when it comes to expressing things like this. I'm sorry. Well, I think you should learn to express yourself. Do you love me? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah, I love you. You ask me, I think that George Walling thinks that if he can indict and convict Kelly McGrath, that he will get that permanent position. No, I wouldn't worry about that too much. You see, I've uh, got it on good authority. The job's already been offered to my car. Really? Mm -hmm. No kidding. Now, you know, that's the most sensible thing I've heard around here since Mayor Finley took office. Well, he's not going to prosecute his own nephew. No, he wouldn't prosecute this case anyway, even if he accepts the job. They wouldn't use a top prosecutor. They consider this case much too simple. Even if you don't. <clears throat> yes, Helen. Okay, okay, put her on. <laughs> you certainly know how to call it a bad time. Look, I'm in a meeting. Derek, I just heard on the radio that you let McGrath go. Let him go? He's out on bail. How could you do that to me? I didn't do it. The magistrate does this at the arraignment. Derek, I am terrified. Raven, there is nothing to be terrified about. Listen. Hold, hold on a second. Uh, listen, guys, can we finish this up in tomorrow's departmental meeting? It's not really crucial now. Please. Anything you say, Chief. Thank you. I told you there's nothing to worry about. He's a dangerous criminal. He's already knifed three people in cold blood. He's only knifed two people. What are you worried about her for anyway? I'm worried about myself because I happen to see a shadow at the unicorn and that shadow is a person and the person was probably McGrath. It's possibly McGrath. Well, I've already told people that I saw someone there. Deborah Saxon knows so the whole damn town probably knows by now. Is this what you're worried about? He's going to be indicted in two days. That's just the point. He's probably going to want to get rid of all the witnesses. Don't you understand? I am frightened. <sighs> Derek, can I see you? Oh, all right. I guess I could take an hour's lunch. Oh, good. Come over here. I'll, I'll make something for the two of us, okay? All right. I'll, I'll be there at 12.30. Raven. What? You don't have to worry about anything anymore. Okay. going to get you over this Kelly McGrath Derek, thing. you don't know what just happened. What, since we phoned? Yes, about ten minutes ago. What happened? Well, um, I went out for a second. Uh, I, I invited you over and I didn't have any food, so I went down to the grocery to get some cold cuts or something. And uh, when I came back, I, I walked up to the door. And then I, I was fumbling around for my keys and I... I 
saw the shadow on the wall. I was so scared, I didn't know whether I should just drop my groceries or, or what. And then I swear I saw that shadow move. And, and it had a knife in its hand. I didn't. I screamed and I ran away. Come on, come on. I just think you're seeing too many shadows. No, I'm not. There was somebody there and it was him. I am going to be his next victim, no, Derek, and no, I know it. No, no, no. <sighs> Nothing's going to happen to you. Oh, yes, of course, I knew that, Mrs. Sweat. Well, if you want to see him, you'll have to go to New York, because that's where he is. Well, I didn't come here because of Jamie. I came because I've been meaning to tell you something for a very long time. How sorry I am about your poor mother. My mother? Yes, about that awful thing that happened to her. I, I can't tell you how sorry I am about that accident. Well, thank you, but, uh, of course, that was a few months ago. I really should have offered my sympathies a, a, a long time ago, but for various reasons, I couldn't. Of course. Thank you. Uh, did you know my mother? No, I don't think so, actually. I only had one chance to meet her when she came here that day for tea, the day she died. Oh, yes, I remember. You were babysitting for Jamie that afternoon. Well, that's right. <laughs> I haven't had a decent night's sleep since that day. But why? You didn't even know her. No, well, she didn't deserve to die. It wasn't supposed to. Do you see? No, I'm afraid I don't. It's all her fault. April Scott. Oh, you're not a real good friend of April's, are you? Now, wait a minute. What does April have to do with all of it? Everything, just everything. It may not seem fair to hear me say this, but April Scott is really the one responsible for your mother's death. What? Yes, yeah, she's just destroyed her life the same indirect way that she destroyed my Emily. You might even say that April Scott is a murderer. Molly, you could call April a lot of things, one of which is a, a simpering little goody two-shoes, but how could she possibly be responsible for my mother's death? She was, Mrs. Swift. But she didn't know my mother any better than you did. As a matter of fact, she didn't even meet her when my mother came to Monticello. She could have met her if she kept that date she made with you. What date? Do you remember? April made a date to come here to the apartment to see you that day. <sighs> That's right, she did. She was going to talk about the custody trial, but then my mother came over on her way to London, and then we canceled the date. I wish I'd known that, Mrs. Swift. You don't know how often I have wished to turn back the clock on that day. I wish I could forget about that day. I can't forget about it. I can't forget any one moment of it. I just put Jamie to bed for his nap. And then I bring a cup of tea. And I was standing in the kitchen thinking about what I was going to do. It wasn't easy for me to think about it. Even though I knew it was necessary. You see... I knew that April was expected late that afternoon. I'd heard her talk to you about it. That's why I volunteered to stay with Jane. And that's why earlier in the week, I had made a certain purchase. I didn't know very much about poisons, but it was easy enough to find what I needed. I just went to the garden supply store. The label said it was supposed to kill garden pests, but I wanted it to used for something else. I knew you didn't use sugar, Mrs. Swift, but I did know that April did. That was one of the advantages of being her housekeeper. The stuff itself was white and looked like crystals, not exactly like sugar, but I thought if I stirred it up very well, there's simply no way to know it was there. It was only April, eventually, who would. But there was one thing that I didn't know. That April wouldn't be here for tea. You do understand, Mrs. Swift, that I was doing this for Emily. I didn't hate April. I hated the idea of killing anyone, especially your poor, innocent mother. Oh, Mother. Yes. 
children are such burdens, aren't they? The way you always made me feel. I did nothing of the kind. Yes, you did. Especially after... You have something like I shouldn't have. Uh, would you like some sugar? Or three spoons, please? Oh, that's good news. You still have your sweet tooth, don't you? I wish I had your metabolism. I inherited that along with your feelings about children. What feelings? Are you trying to tell me that I didn't care for you as a child? Maybe you did a little bit. Till Daddy died. No. That wasn't true. Yes, it is. I always thought you blamed me for Daddy's death. It was the other way around. You hated me after he died. Oh, he adored you so much. Too much. You've always felt it. Too long. Past died. Oh, Mother. It was an accident that killed her, Mrs. Smith. I just didn't put enough poison in the sugar bowl, so it didn't take effect until she was in her automobile. what I did to your mother, Mrs. Swift. I hated even trying to get rid of April, but it was the only answer I could think of to see that my Emily was well and happy again. You see, ten years, I had watched her lonely and miserable until that man that she thought was her husband came back to her. And then, well, suddenly on account of April, she was in a hospital, almost a vegetable, well, naturally, I thought that if April was out of Drake's life, Emily could go back to him, and she'd be happy again. We'd all be happy. Oh, no, please, Mrs. Swift, don't go. I haven't finished. If you want to know if I forgive you, I do. You don't understand. I didn't come here for forgiveness. Molly, why don't you go home and rest? Oh, I couldn't do that, Mrs. Swift. You see, I heard that young lady detective... Miss Saxon say that you were at the unicorn the night that Elliot Dorn was killed. Is that true? I don't understand. Were you at the club that night that Elliot Dorn was killed? And did you see anyone there? I don't understand. Oh, it's very important to me, Mrs. Smith. Very important. You see, I saw Elliot Dorn the night that he was killed and he came to visit you. Only you weren't at home. After I let him in, I went to put Jamie to bed in his room. Mr. Dorn went into the kitchen. And he started poking around as if he was looking for something. Mrs. Christie, now, shouldn't you leave? Ah, uh, Molly, can I ask you a question? Uh, were you sitting for Jamie the day Raven's mother came back from Austin? Yes, I, I, as a matter of fact, I think you are. Uh, did you have the good fortune to meet the woman? No. No, I didn't even know she was coming over. Molly, uh, can you remember if Raven was in a hospitable mood that day? Oh, uh, I suppose. Did she cry? I mean, why are you asking me this? Uh, I was just wondering if Raven felt up to playing the good daughter that day, that fateful day, and whether she served her mother anything to eat or drink. Oh, I wouldn't know anything about that. I mean, she came way after I left. It was late afternoon, wasn't it? Yes, and what I've heard was. Well, that translates to tea time in merry old England. You know more about that than I would. Raven is in there. And I'm sure she would know that the first thing Nadine would want when she arrived would be a piping hot cup of tea with sugar to taste. about the sugar, about how your mother died. And I realized that I was in terrible danger. So you killed Elliot? I 
I had to do something. I just had to. I couldn't go to prison. I had my poor Emily to take care of. Well, no, it wasn't exactly Emma. Now I have to be very truthful with you. I couldn't bear the idea of a trial and a sentence spending any time in that terrible place with all those horrible criminal women. Oh, no. I had to stop Elliot Dorn from telling anyone about the poison in the sugar bowl. So, at night, instead of going home to the penthouse, I went to the unicorn. It was so crowded and noisy and the lights were flashing that nobody noticed me. I made very sure that a waitress didn't even see me. I walked in and melted into the crowd and found my way to the powder room. Where I stayed for two hours hiding until the unicorn closed for the night and then I came out. My heart was pounding so loud it was almost as if that awful music was still playing. But it wasn't. There was only a small light on near the end of the bar. I opened my purse and took out the kitchen knife that I brought with me. And then I realized how foolish I was being. I couldn't just stab that man in the back and hope to get away, Kristen. I'd leave fingerprints. If, if I couldn't get the knife out again, I'd leave the police all the evidence they need. But I got this idea. When I first came in, in the back of the stage, I'd seen this clown puppet. And I remembered thinking, my goodness, they make them just like a glove. So I put on the clown puppet over my hand. And I was able to clean the knife and keep my fingerprints off the handle. Then suddenly there was a noise. Someone was coming. So I ducked behind the little stage. Anybody home? Ready. later I discovered I wasn't safe. I hadn't been alone in the unicorn. Someone had been there. And someone had seen me. Now, uh, that was you, wasn't it, Mrs. Quick? It was dreadful. Oh, you just don't know how awful it was, Mrs. Swift. But it just had to be done. I had to be safe. That was the only way to do it. Do you understand? Oh, 
Oh, I'm glad. Because then I discovered that I wasn't safe. I hadn't been alone in the unicorn. Someone had been there. Someone had seen me. Now, that was you, wasn't it, Mrs. Swift? No, I wasn't there. Oh, yes, it was. You told the police you were there, and you told them that you saw someone there. No, I saw Kelly McGrath. I said I saw Kelly McGrath. The young man, puppeteer. <laughs> but he wasn't there. Only his puppets were there. I was very grateful for that, I can tell you. Well, I can't tell you why I took the clown puppet with me. I suppose I saw the blood and thought it might incriminate me in some way, so I stuffed it in my pocketbook and laughed. Molly, I didn't see you. Ask the police, really. I did not. I didn't accuse you. I don't know whether I should believe No, you can believe me. You don't have anything to fear from me. Really, you don't. Don't I, Mrs. Swift? After what I've just told you. I pretended, of course, that I wasn't listening and that I wasn't frightened about what I was hearing, but I was. And you know what? Mr. Scott saved my life. Treeper? He did. He sent me down to the office to get some documents that night. And I found Cliff Nelson working there alone. It was the perfect opportunity. The police were suspecting Kelly McGrath. It was, it was awful. It was much worse than what I had to do to Mr. Dorn because, Mrs. Swift, I just liked that poor man so much, and I didn't, I didn't want him to die. I was so flustered, I forgot to leave the puppet. I just stuffed it in my bag and ran out down the corridor. While I was waiting for the elevator, I noticed that someone was coming up to my floor, so I hid in the corner. And I watched him go right down the hall in the direction of the office that I had just left. McGrath. Yes, but I didn't know it. All I knew is that I 
had to get out of there. Well, I, I rang the elevator. And then I heard his footsteps coming back behind me. So I decided quickly so I'd turn around and look as if I was just getting off. office and pretend that that was the first time I'd come in, and that's what I did. So you see, Mrs. Swift, that's how I discovered Mr. Nelson's body. So, Mrs. Swift, we just have, you see, a great deal in common. Both of us would like that young man to take the blame, but well, I, I just wouldn't be happy about it. Well, then tell the truth. Don't you understand? If you go to the police, then they won't be as hard on you. Just tell the truth, Mommy. You don't want to understand me. Don't you see how hard I have worked not to be arrested? I won't be, if all goes well. I won't be. Be free. Oh, free. Take, take care of my poor and lovely Emily. I'll be free. And we'll be a family again. Me, Emily, and Rape her. Yeah, the husband. If it all goes well. Mrs. Swift, are you listening to me? Yes, I am. Of course, the way things turned out, I didn't really need to try and kill your friend, Mr. Nelson, at all. He didn't have a clue about who killed Elliot Dorn. He was just bluffing. He's a jerk. He thought I was the suspect. Yes, I found that out later. But by that time, the damage was done. Oh, I am just so glad I didn't seriously hurt him. Because you see, Mrs. Swift, I don't really want to hurt anyone. Molly, that's good. That's good so you should go to the police and tell them that. Because then they won't be so hard on you and maybe you'll get off lightly. Oh, no. You never get off lightly when it comes to murder much better just to simply never tell them the truth. But that's impossible, don't you understand? The chief of police is a smart man. But he's already indicted. Tell him McGrath, that doesn't make him too smart. Well, he hasn't convicted him? And tell him McGrath has a very good lawyer, don't you see? If he gets off, then the case is still open, and that means you can be in more trouble than you are right now. But I'm not in any trouble, Mrs. Swift. <laughs> you think that anyone thinks that I can fall? that I was so tense by that time the faint was nearly genuine. Yes, I sent for an ambulance. That's the first thing I did. 
No, I didn't see anyone at all in the vicinity. But I did find something. And now, uh, if if you don't mind, I, I think I'd better be getting along. I have someplace else to go. <laughs> no. No, I, I don't mind at all. Go ahead, Molly. You see, uh, April went down to the other house, you know, the old house in Oakdale. Yes, yes, I know. She went back there with the baby, and that's where she's staying. And that's, well, I'm going to go there, you know, just to see that there are no more problems for Emily, and that she's happy, and that, uh, that Draper is free. Molly.
speak of the devil. What's that, Mr. Whitney? <laughs> Nothing, Gunter. Come on in. You're the contract you wanted. Good evening, Mr. Vaughn. Oh, good. Well, here, I'll lift these over. You help yourself to a drink, if you like. Uh, thank you, Mr. Whitney. late, Martin. The room is suddenly rather foul. Did I say something wrong, Mr. Whitney? Oh, I wouldn't worry about Martins. Um, tell me about this meeting you had with the newest member of my, uh, admiration society. Uh, there's not much to tell. I, uh, Met Mrs. Swift outside Bennett's department store. I held some packages for her while she hailed a cab. Uh, how gallant of you. <laughs> and you seem to think that she'd like to uh, see me? Well, from the way she asked about you, I'd say that's a pretty good bet. Well, I may call that flattering. She is a very uh, attractive woman, isn't she? Oh, come, Gunther. Would I be seen in the presence of any woman who wasn't? I thought she might like to call her, so uh, I dug her number out of the phone book. Well, thank you, Gunther. What a nice idea. Just trying to be of service, sir. Oh, well, just to show you how much I appreciate your efforts on my behalf, I think I might just give this lovely lady a call. No time like the present. And if what you suspect is true, this phone call might just make this lady's evening. is out this evening. Over your head. Hold on. 
I want you to hear this, Calvin. Look, uh, duty calls, right? I gotta go. I'll talk to you. Good night. Good night. What is it, Al? Desk caught a squeal about a half hour ago. I thought you'd be interested in hearing the tape. Well, let's see what you got. Yes, that's familiar. Look, you have to send someone out to Oakdale because this woman just went out there to kill April Scott. Oh, God, I, I don't know the address. It is her. It's Ray. Please, her name is Molly Sherwood, and she is on her way to Oakdale to murder someone. Now, you please send someone there. Now, what was that about? Well, we called the local uh, precinct in Oakdale to, uh, to give them what information we had. Of course, they have to find out where this house is so they can check it out. Look, uh, give me the cheese at home. It's an emergency. been shot. Somebody tried to kill her. Me. You know, Sergeant Weston sent the medic out. But there was nobody home. Wait, hold on, Chief. They what? I said there was nobody home. Chief, the story's getting a little cockeyed. It appears uh, Raven wasn't there when they arrived. Well, does anybody know where she is? Uh, was there anything on the tape about where the woman went? She said she was heading to Oakdale herself. Wait a minute, wait a minute. She's been shot and she's driving to Oakdale in a, a thunderstorm. That, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Chief, I have just been told that um, Raven is driving herself out to Oakdale. What? what? Are the p police out there been notified of this? Well, yeah, but um, they're probably going to have a little trouble finding the place because Raven didn't have the address of the sky house. Well, if they had any common sense, they could, they could look it up the phone book for crying out loud. I'm sure they'll work it out. But the thing that's strange is... Why did she mention Molly Sherwood? And what is April Scott doing back in her old house? I've got no idea, but I think we better get out there. Listen, pick me up as soon as you can. I'll be ready. And have the address. This is no night to get lost. Right, Chief. Oh, my God. Raven better be all right. Sherwood want to see Dawn dead. She thought that Elliot knew that it was her. She thought that Elliot figured out the whole sugar thing. So she killed Elliot, and then she tried to kill Cliff Nelson, and then she arranged a little accident for herself to try to blame it on Kelly McGrath. Oh, so she told you the whole story. <sighs> yes, because she didn't think it would matter. She was going to kill me. But she didn't know that I had a gun. Yeah, I'll just go away and... You'll never hear from me again. I'll, I'll just take Emily. We'll both go away together. Don't you make one move toward me, you raving lunatic! Why won't you understand me? Emily is so alone in the world. I made a promise to her father, her dying father, that I would take care of her. She's just like a daughter to me. But you are insane and you need to be locked up. I know what I did was wrong. But my son is done. 
Now, why does anybody want to send me to prison? You think I'm going to let you out of here so you can go to Oakdale and murder April? Oh, why should you worry? You've never cared very much about April. God. My God, that doesn't mean I'm going to go let you murder her. Now, get back. Are you calling this week? Someone was pointing a gun at them at point blank. Send this stand of order. Go on, what happened? Well, I don't know how long I was unconscious, but then I opened my eyes. And I was alive. I, I touched myself to see if I had blood on me, and I figured out she missed me. I had such a headache, and... Uh, then all of a sudden, I remember that she told me she was going to go to April, so I, I went to call the police. Police headquarters, Sergeant West. I have to speak to the chief of police. I'm sorry, ma'am. The chief is available tomorrow. This is a matter of life and death. Yes, ma'am. We're used to that. Just tell me about it. There is a crazy woman, and she just shot me. And I told them about Molly, and I told them about April, and, uh, I couldn't remember the address, but... Well, we found it all right, Chief, but the lady got here before us. Oh, God, thank God you did. You should thank your housekeeper. She didn't take shooting lessons like I did. <clears throat> Raven, those are blanks in the gun. What? Bullets that were left in the gun were blanks. I, uh, didn't think you could handle live ammunition. You put blanks in the gun? You put blanks in the gun? I could have been killed! You would have been, Raven, if, uh, they had been real. <sighs> transfer the jurisdiction as soon as you get all the yeah, Anything you say, Chief. I think this one's too big for us anyway. Okay. Come on, Calvin. Let's go. Calvin. Calvin, Derek. Derek, what's well, going on around here? Where's Mo? Okay. Okay. Honey. Honey, you all right? Yeah. Oh, the baby. My God, where's the baby? Draper, your housekeeper's in the basement. She's dead. Huh? Yeah, she's confessed to the thing that your client, Kelly McGrath, has been accused of. I guess that cleared him. Yeah, Molly did it. She did it all. She killed Elliot. She killed Raven's mother. She tried to kill Raven, and she came here to kill me. Molly? Yeah. What? Why Molly? Because she wanted to do it for Emily. So that Emily would have you. Uh, Derek, would, would you excuse us? I need to talk to April alone. Sure. We'll go right in here. Come on, Kel. I better phone into headquarters. Tell them what's happened. Yes, yeah. Sergeant, you better stay with the body until your men get here. Yes, sir. Okay, I really thought Raven killed her mother. It seemed like the beginning of a whole chain of events. But you were right about that, Rick. You were absolutely right. That was the beginning. Yeah, I know. It seems so logical to me, too. Raven killed her mother to get Jamie's inheritance, and then she killed Elliot because he was going to get in the way of the custody trial and the money. And then she tried to kill Cliff because he was going to expose her. It just, oh, it just doesn't make any sense. I know it doesn't, Deborah. I was just saying to Calvin that uh, we're all shaking our heads this morning. We made a mistake and we have to admit it, that's all. That's right. We all made the mistake, so why don't you just join the club? Oh, Calvin, I cannot join your club. Look, I know you guys made an honest mistake, but for me it was, it was something else. It was personal. It was too personal. Well, several. Yeah, uh, Chief, uh, isn't it true that uh, Molly tried to shoot Raven? She did shoot her. Fortunately, she used the gun that I gave Raven. What? The uh, chief didn't think Mr. Swift should be trusted with live ammo. I suppose it was a lousy trick, loading the gun with blanks. I was just afraid if I didn't give Raven a loaded gun, she would have gotten one on her own, wound up shooting the milkman or somebody. 
So she's all right, huh? She was shaken up. She went out to the Scott's house out in Oakdale, you know. Yeah, she shook up Molly Sherwood pretty good, too. Mm -hmm. Enough to uh, send her to her death down a flight of stairs. Oh, my God. If she hadn't gone out there, April would be dead this morning. So instead of Raven being the villain, she turns out to be the heroine. <laughs> I uh, guess you could put it that way. Look, this is all a very interesting post-mortem, but I think you guys better get back to your desks. We have a lot of loose ends to tie up on this case. Here, Ruth, why don't we get back to yeah, work? Yeah, I've huh? got a loose end to tie up myself, Chief. Well, that's what I'm going to close to April and Draper, right? We were stunned to hear what happened out at Oakdale last night. I, could, I mean, the news is very sketchy, but uh, I understand that Draper and April and the baby still out there. Yes, yes, they wanted me to stay out there, but uh, I just couldn't. Uh, I needed to come back here and rest. Yeah, well, that's exactly what you should do. The, the only reason I called is to find out if I could make an appointment to interview you, if you'll give me one. I'd like to sleep a couple of hours. Look, why don't you call early this afternoon and, and we'll get together then, okay? Terrific. Thanks so much. <laughs> Bye-bye. Oh, who is it? It's Carol Deegan. Oh. Hello. What are you doing here? I came to see if you were all right, Raven. Uh, obviously, you heard about last night. Yes, I've heard. And I was very worried about you. You were worried about me? Yes, my dear. Well, I don't believe it. Somebody is actually worried about me. Raven, from what I've heard, you've been through a terrible ordeal. <laughs> yes. The woman meant to murder me. For heaven's sake, why? Because she thought that I saw her the night Elliot Dorn was murdered at the Unicorn. How could that possibly be? Well, because I was at the Unicorn that night, and I did see someone, but it was a shadow. Then you had told the police that shadow was Molly Sherwood? Well, not exactly. But see, she assumed that I could identify her because she was there, so she shot me. She fired at me point blank with my own gun. Thank heavens I had put blanks in the gun instead of bullets. Then... You went to the Scott's house. From what I heard on the news this morning, your entrance into that house was what caused that woman's death. She thought she'd killed me. But actually, you see, I fainted when she shot me, so she only thought I was dead. But then, when you entered that house, she must have thought you were a ghost. She was so scared, she fell down the stairs. And you saved April's life. April was lying there unconscious. She had a noose around her neck. You wouldn't have believed it. If I hadn't showed up when I did, Molly would have killed her. As I say, you saved April's life, and that was a wonderful thing. Uh, that's true. I did save April's life, didn't I? I don't think there's any question of it. You might very well find yourself the hero one of the hour, my dear. 